Good morning, guys. I'm Nathan Yell. You can call me Nathan. And I am the one who's going to report regarding the theories of career development. So, what is the need theory? Need theory was developed by Anne Rowe. individual occupational choices. So the need structure is greatly influenced by early childhood frustrations and satisfaction. The needs okay actually is fo- it's actually focusing on the satisfaction of needs if we are going to follow Maslow's hierarchy. So a need not satisfied over a long period of time eventually becomes an unconscious motivator. The ways and degrees by which needs are satisfied define which of them will be welcome will become the strongest motivator. The intensity of needs and their satisfactions determine the degree of motivation that leads to accomplishment cultural backgrounds and socioeconomic status of one's family likewise affects the need hierarchy and career directions. So what is Anne Rose 6 Attitudes? It is classified early as three types of emotional climate such as attitude, parental behavior with each two classifications. First would be warm and cold, which focuses on the concentration of the child. So the parent can be overprotective or over demanding. Okay, so they show actually the warmth and coldness uh, when it comes to career choice. When we say overprotective, they show uh, emotion and explores or intrudes the child's life when it comes to their decision. Over demanding on the other hand, they set high standards for their child and they are branded as perfectionist. Next would be avoidance of the child. Okay, so this is uh, classified under coldness. So first would be rejecting, second would be neglecting. So what is uh, rejecting? They don't make any effort okay, on the child's needs. Rather, whatever the decision, or wh- whatever decision made by the child, the parent won't intervene at all. For neglecting, there is a little bit of affection and little effort. Next would be acceptance of the child. So that shows warmth. So there would be casual acceptance and loving acceptance. Okay, when we say casual acceptance, they it's uh, easy going. They pay some attention and a little bit of effort to uh, train the child. Actually, loving ac- acceptance on the other hand encourages uh, independence, warmth, and uh, affection. So it's a good thing that. Uh, this uh, this classification was given by by Andrew, okay, to make sure that uh, it is diverse. I mean, the parenting styles of uh, parents are diverse in which uh, in which way, and uh, as well, okay, we can see that it exists. It's not just a theory; it actually exists. So uh, next would be Anro's categories of occupation. So first would be person-centered, okay, it could be loving, overprotecting, or over-demanding. Okay, they love to work in contact with people. Okay, so just to make it clear, okay, we're focusing on the child already in this, on this uh, in this case. So child to their adolescent stage. 
up until, until their adult stage. So uh, they love to uh, work in contact with people. They love um, engaging with people. They are the people person uh, kind of person. So uh, first would be service. Definitely uh, service to other people. Second would be business contact more on to a person to person um, scenario I mean they, they want to engage more in to uh, face to face like let's say um, financial advisors can also be uh, uh, under this category next managerial management in business industry and government so perfect example for this one would be operations managers directors heads okay, so uh, they are more on to uh, engaging with their employees so next would be general culture okay such as teaching okay as a teacher you um you teach um children students who are uh, Let's more focus on teaching. Next would be arts and entertainment. Th these are uh, performers, okay, such as actors, stage plays. Okay. These are some examples of uh, person-centered um, uh, under the category uh, under one of the categories of occupations by Andrew. So uh, non-person oriented. Okay. So this uh, could, if we are going to base this one under the discussion earlier, okay, the um, the classifications, the six attitudes, okay, it jives with the categories of occupations as well. Okay, so as we can see, casual upset. Dance, neglecting, and rejecting uh, child to be uh, not specifically child, but actually attitude, uh, parenting attitudes fall under uh, this kind of uh, category. First, with uh, this kind of people, okay, or person, they are they they want to be away from persons. They want to be more technical their field of work or their career so some of them focus on technology we, uh, they focus on production maintenance and uh, transportation second would be outdoors so people who are farmers okay so mining okay and uh, forestry okay they fall under this category as well as science, the uh, scientists uh, would uh, would be considered under this uh, type of uh, occupation. So next would be Anro, uh, I mean Anro's occupational levels. Okay, first would be professional and managerial one. So they they are independent, important and. They have varied responsibilities and they focus on policy making. Second would be professional and managerial too. Genuine autonomy but responsibilities are uh, less important than level 1. So we can say that uh, professional and managerial 1 are the big bosses. Okay, let's say uh, director of a company or CEO then professional uh, and managerial 2 would uh, go under uh, senior operations manager or operations manager or let's say coaches next uh, would be semi-professional and small business low uh, this has low level of responsibility for others application of policy is only for self so we can uh, say that uh, people who who are self-employed focus on their business only I mean it's different from professional and managerial one but uh, 
this is like small scale businesses that uh, they focus on their personal profit okay, and not the company's profit. Next would be skilled, responsible for performance of task assigned with some amount of autonomy and initiative and the only special training uh, or apprenticeship is required. Okay, so let's say guidance counselors can fall under this um, this occupational level okay since I mean there is apprenticeship and special training required so next would be semi-skilled um, level this uh, focuses on the I mean responsible they are responsible for performance of tasks assigned with less autonomy and initiative Next would be unskilled. They merely follow simple instructions and do repetitive actions. So different levels of functions are found in each of the occupational classifications. First, the, uh, the need structure uh, structures defines one initial selection of an occupational category. Level of attainment in such category will depend on one's ability and or socioeconomic background. Moving on, we would uh, go to Donald Super's self-concept theory. So it was developed by Donald Super. The self-concept theory is vital to Super's developmental theory. It's a vocational uh, development process of uh, developing and implementing a self-concept. So what is self-concept? So this is how individuals view themselves and their current situation. So they reflect on their needs, their personality, their values, and their interest. So first would be vocational self-concept. So there would be physical and mental growth, observations of work, identification with working adults, general environment, general experiences, assimilation of similarities and differences between self and others, and the awareness of the work, world of work. The driving force that establishes a career pattern one will follow throughout life. Most efficient means self-expression so super's vocational developmental stages where the maxi cycle comes with five uh, stages first would be growth second is exploration establishment maintenance and decline so let's go on to the first stage I'll just show uh, you a little bit on the life rainbow just to give a clear picture on uh, Super's vocational developmental stage. So this is the life rainbow. So as you can see there, okay, you can see there is growth from uh, in from birth until 14, exploration from 14 to 25. Establishment 26 to 45, maintenance 46 to 65, and disengagement okay, 65 and upward. So, first would be growth. So, this focuses on uh, the development of capacities, attitudes, and uh, interest needs associated with self-concept curiosity are uh, one of their um, qualities we can see so first they focus on uh, I mean they notice the changes in their physical or social needs okay either that's hunger thirst loneliness boredom uncertainty wish for excitement or the desire for stimulation so that 
that's around birth to five years old. So next would be fantasy. So they focus on uh, occupational fantasies like I want to be a doctor someday or an engineer, a policeman. Okay. So second would a uh, th- uh, third. Okay. Be interest. So it is formed when fantasies of occupations are affected by information about the world. So this, I mean, if we are going to uh, harmonize it with education, okay, they will have a bit picture on what they like. So their fantasies, for example, to be a doctor, okay, will be associated on their inclination with science or health okay so just to give a clear picture on that capacity is a view of certain abilities to master a cer- uh, certain skills so right now with k to 12s program okay we have um, stem humes and uh, a, a GAS, yeah, we have those kind of uh, programs that we have right now with the pet. But for this, okay, this is different. We call this one as elective. Okay, so maybe some of you were exposed to drafting, automotives, or electronics. Okay, when they were, let's say, around high school, first year or second year high school, or maybe earlier. So, exploration. This is the second stage. Okay, it is uh, characterized by a tentative phase in which choices are narrowed, but not finalized. So, crystallization, okay, it's tentative actually, around 14 to 18 they formulating a general vocational goal through awareness of resources contingencies interest values and planning for preferred occupations so they are uh, a bit ready on uh, what would be uh, what would they like okay so it's more clear than uh, the first stage the last I mean the last uh, the first of the last stage so specification okay it's a trial transition between 18 and 21 so moving from tentative to a specific vocational preference implementation this is more into trial and stabilization this is around 21 to 24 four years old and they are comp- contemplating training for vocational preference and uh, entering employment. So we could say that these are ideally college students okay, who have already graduated, they finished their uh, on-the-job trainings, or they have trainings after graduation and they are entering uh, the world of uh, work. third stage would be establishment okay so at age uh, 24 to 44 these are characterized by trial and stabilization through work experiences so more on trial and error they focus on um, what would be I mean is this uh, career good for me or maybe sh- I should change uh, my career for example, let's say I entered as a social worker, okay, and after how many years, uh, maybe after two years, okay, I decided I want to I want to be a guidance counselor. And that's why I'm going to take up uh, a master's in guidance and counseling, and then so that I can work in under an educational institution so this stage actually there uh, 
there are bit changes because of uh, trial and error so first would be stabilization so this could be advancement or frustration and this works uh, maybe around 23 to 35 so they are confirming a preferred career by actual work experience and use of talents to demonstrate career choice as an appropriate one so next would be consolida uh, consolidation so this is around 35 to 40 so establishment in a career by advancement status and seniority let's say before, before um, I am let's relate this one to BPO since these are uh, trending right now as a call center agent you're going to be a customer service representative one okay and after that for some promotion you'll be under CSR2 or customer service rep representative 2 after that you'll be a team leader and then you'll be an operations manager that's how it works inside a BPO and if you stayed for a long time and uh, your efforts paid off you can be either the site director or the uh, senior operations manager of that specific let's say account I'm, sh uh, I'm not sure if some of, uh, some of you uh, experience uh, have experiences with BPO's but that's how it works there so it's just an example on how uh, how I relate consolidation with this one you can you can be uh, the site director and that would say around you you manage mo most of the sites okay of i mean you're focusing on your own site okay your own your own but it goes on and on actually so next would be advancement so it's moving ahead into a position of more responsibility with higher pay let's say you you are going to be the next CEO of uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Mang Inasal or Jollibee okay I mean it, it the, the more the more you go up to your career the more responsibility the more the pay so it's correlated somehow on that fourth stage would be maintenance so maintenance of status at work may vary from person to person physical abilities company policies personal financial situation and motivation so stagnation this is the holding stage so holding on to a position when some level of success has been attained so they they can say that they're they're good with their position okay and they won't they won't go far they, they're they're happy but they're not completely happy but they're happy they can see themselves staying there until they retire some of them okay next would be updating attendance in continuing education programs to maintain status in that occupation so example for this one you take up your masters and then after you take up your masters you get your your license okay, your professional license and then you study again okay either uh, PhD you'll go to PhD or you'll take up another master course okay under the graduate school and then have another license it depends okay you still want to continue what you want what you want to attain well, perfect example would be PhD in under uh, graduate school so that it uh, it can maintain 
higher pay maybe yeah so next is innovation the making progress in one's profession uh, development of new skills as a field change as a field changes so on innovation you are trying to seek other I mean, like since you have already attained okay what you want okay you're finding uh, another way okay but not specifically like that to make yourself busy but to find okay new set of skills okay that would be productive to to the society or for self uh, for self satisfaction disengagement deceleration is to 60 onwards so these are the retirement stage actually so slowing down on one's work uh, responsibility finding easier ways of doing work or spending less time doing work so first would be retirement so there are financial planning planning activities to do in, re uh, in retirement you may choose a new part-time job or volunteer work this is what they say uh, natapos ko na yung gusto kong gawin so they want to fulfill uh, their life um, I mean the last part of their life with maybe they focus too much on their work okay they want to focus on their grandkids maybe so that's how retirement works disengagement okay. so slowing down in uh, physical abilities and ability to remember and this is also associated with wisdom okay so yung mga lolo't lola natin they uh, our grand grandparents actually uh, giving us I mean it comes with age already okay they give um, life phrases wisdom okay for us to continue our our journey the next or they want to they want to share their knowledge on what they have done in their early years okay and what are the practices or words of wisdom that they can impart and the last stage would be death so it's pretty uh, uh, straightforward that's so uh, next would be the mini cycle so it takes place as one moves from one stage to the next or every time a person is destabilized by a certain situation so there are disruptions it's not it's not actually you are going to focus on the whole super vocational developmental stage okay we uh, i mean most of us uh, mo let's say majority of uh, fall onto the those stages but there are some people actually fall under the mini cycle so they are uh, this there are certain some situations that uh, it affects actually your your career when one situation happens okay, we don't know actually what is the specific um, specific cause why they haven't uh, done their they want in life so that's it that's the mini cycle so cycling and recycling super views uh, ages and transitions as very flexible and as not occurring in a well-ordered sequence so a person may recycle through one or more stages so they can go back through those uh, stages for example we go to example we are at stage three okay we go back to stage two okay so so that we can it's like a realization for us all so i guess that's it yeah so this is uh super's conceptions of life stages and development tasks okay you can uh have I can upload the PowerPoint or the presentation to our uh, to this.
tool, uh, on our group learning career guidance so that you can have uh, references thank you and